Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Gretchen and today I want to talk about my most anticipated releases for April 2024. So since I've started my booktube channel, I have really been paying more attention to upcoming releases and books that I am excited about. I used to be the person that would watch booktube to find out that information but now I feel compelled to put out some of that content myself so I am doing a lot of the research ahead of time so that I could put my own content out related to it because I know that those were always videos or are some of the videos still that I really enjoy watching. So I did one for March and I had a lot of fun with it and I I got a lot of good feedback from it so I am going to try to continue to put those out monthly and this one there were so many that once I started to kind of go through the list I realized I really need to consider putting limitations on the amounts that I am putting out so I've kind of limited myself to two per week and and if for some reason there's a week that I only have one or maybe there's not any, then I can redistribute those. So I kind of want to start to keep these lists to about 10 books or under, most of the time with it being eight being that there are usually four Tuesdays in a month and uh, sometimes we get the occasion where there is five. So want to keep that at a very manageable number. So let's get into the books and like I did previously I'm going to break it down week by week and we're starting with the week of April 2nd and I apologize ahead of time because my cat has all of a sudden walked into the room and she is being very vocal so I'm sure that will continue throughout the duration of the video. So the first book that I want to talk about and I do apologize I have them up on my computer. So the first book is The Stone Home by Crystal Hannah Kim and this is being released by William Morrow. And this book it says that it's a hauntingly poetic family drama and coming of age story that reveals a dark corner of South Korean history through the eyes of a small community living in a reformatory center. And that to me sounds like catnip for a book that I would be interested in reading. Um, it's uh, first of all it we have uh, family drama, we have coming of age, and I cannot think of a book that I have read before that focuses on a reformatory center. So I, I know of them and I know of their existence, but I don't think off the top of my head that I have read a book that focuses on that topic. So it sounds really interesting to me and I am definitely going to uh, put this on my TBR. I will preface the rest of this list by saying I am putting these on my TBR and these are books I'm really excited about coming out but I don't know when I'm going to get to them. And I say that because, as you know, we are in the midst of book prize season and I already have a pretty packed TBR, but I will try to sprinkle some of these books in amongst those other books. But uh, chances are a lot of these, although they're coming out next month, I am not going to likely be getting to a lot of these until much later into the year. Now, the second book is also being being released on the 2nd of April and that is Hell Put to Shame and it is subtitled The 1921 Murder Farm Massacre and the Horror of America's Second Slavery. So this is nonfiction, and the author is Earl Swift and this is being released by Mariner and this 
is another one of those books that if you've watched my channel before you know that I am a sucker for those untold histories that we in America or even in other countries have had hidden from us and when these types of stories come out I am always trying to read them because I want to educate myself on those things that happened that were kind of shoved under the rug and it takes a book like this to get them out into the public. So when I read the synopsis of this one I absolutely knew I had to put it on my list. So this one says, Hell Put to Shame is a powerfully unsettling portrait of the single most savage episode in the long decades of savagery inflicted by white southerners on their black neighbors in the 20th century and the methodical process that followed to erase those crimes from America's collective memory. Um, and then it goes on to say, on a Sunday morning in the spring of 1921, a small boy made a grim discovery as he played on a riverbank in the cotton country of rural Georgia. The bodies of two drowned men bound together with wire and chain and weighted with a hundred pound sack of rocks. Within a day, a third, or I'm sorry, within days, a third body turned up in another nearby river and in the weeks that followed eight others and with them a deeper horror all 11 had been kept in virtual slavery before their deaths in fact as america was shocked to learn the dead were among thousands of black men enslaved throughout the south in conditions nearly as dire as those before the civil war hell put to shame tells the forgotten story of that mass killing and of the relevations about peonage or debt slavery that it placed before a public self-satisfied that involuntary servitude had ended at Appomattox more than 50 years before. So it sounds like it is going to be gripping. It sounds like it's going to be a brutal story, but it sounds like it is a necessary one. And I definitely am going to put this on my list of nonfiction reads that I want to get to by the end of the year. So moving on to the week of April 9th, and I actually only have one for this week, and that is The Limits by Nell Frudenberger, and this is being released by Knopf. So this book sounds extra interesting to me, even though it is a COVID novel, and I know that's going to turn a lot of people off, but this one sounds like it's going to be giving me something that a lot of the other COVID novels didn't. So the synopsis of this says, from Moria, a tiny volcanic island off the coast of Tahiti, a French biologist obsessed with saving Polynesia's imperiled coral reefs sends her teenage daughter to live with her ex-husband in New York. By the time 15-year-old Pia arrives at her father's Stephen's luxury apartment in Manhattan and meets his new younger wife Kate. She has been shuttled between her parents' disparate lives, her father's consuming work as a surgeon at an overwhelmed New York hospital, her mother's relentless drive against a ticking ecological clock for most of her life. Um, fluent in French, intellectually precocious, moving between cultures with seeming ease, Pia arrives in New York poised for a rebellion just as COVID COVID sends her and her stepmother together into near total isolation. So that sounds really interesting to me. I know a lot of the COVID novels that we've had in the past have been about people that know each other that have been isolated and I find it very interesting to take somebody completely out of their original environment and not just like a home environment but a different country and pick them up and take them to New York, which was one of the most difficult and ravaged parts of the country when it came to COVID. It was like an epicenter. And not only that, but to be isolated with a total stranger almost. That sounds really interesting. And if done right, I think that that could be a fantastic book. So now we're moving on to the week of the 16th and the next book that we have is Butter by Asako Yuzuki and this is being published by Echo. This is a translated piece and it is a 
apparently a bestseller in Japan and it is about a gourmet chef slash serial killer and the journalist that is pursuing her and also this is based on a true story so that already sounds fascinating that we're getting that element of truth here so there's a few things that are interesting it's about serial killers when there's probably going to be a lot of food writing when it's translated when and it's based on a true story so when so this sounds like it could be really good and I am really looking forward to getting to this one also being released during the week of the 16th is while we were burning by Sarah Kofi and this is published by GP Putnam and Sons and this one one, I don't even need to read the rest of the blurb before I know this is a book that I want to read because it simply says Parasite meets such a fun age. In a scorching debut that is as heartbreaking as it is thrilling, examining the intersection of race, class, and female friendship, and the devastating consequences of everyday actions sold. Want, you had me at Parasite meets such a fun age. That sounds like such an amazing combo. And if this book truly delivers that, it's going to be probably a five star read for me. Um, it's saying a lot in that blurb. And I certainly hope that it lives up to that. Because like I said, that could be the perfect book for me. So moving on to the week of April 23rd, there's just one book, I think. Yep. And I am probably going to shock you with this because this is probably a side of me that you have not really seen too much of. But there's no shame in my game. And I am just going to come out and say it. I am looking forward to Funny Story by Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry books. I know they're not for everybody. I know they're commercial. I know they're not literary and they're never going to win any book prizes or anything like that, but I find comfort in them and they're the type of lighthearted, easy read that I need in my life between all of those other complex, uh, literary, uh, classic type books that I always tend to gravitate towards. So anytime I see a new book by Emily Henry, I am always going to be excited to pick it up. And you can hate on me if you want, but I will stand by Emily Henry's books and they just make me happy. So there's nothing wrong with that. So now we're moving on to the last week of April and I have two books to talk about. The first one is called Crow Talk by Eileen Garvin and this is published by Dutton. Now this book states that it is, um, I've never read anything by Eileen Garvin before, um, but apparently she had a book out previously called The Music of Bees, which sounds like something I would want to read. Blurb says, uh, Eileen Garvin returns with a moving story of hope, healing, and unexpected friendship set amidst the wild natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest. And then it goes on to say, Frankie O'Neill and Anne Ryan would seem to have nothing in common. Frankie is a lonely ornithologist struggling to salvage her dissertation on the spotted owl following a rift with her advisor. Anne is an Irish musician far from home and family, raising her five-year-old son Aiden who refuses to speak. At Beauty Bay, a community of summer homes nestled on the shores of June Lake and the remote foothills of Mount Adams, it's off-season and most houses shuttered for the fall. And most houses are shuttered for the fall. But Frankie Adrift returns to the rundown caretaker's cottage that has been in the hardworking O'Neill family for generations, a beloved place and a constant reminder of the family she has lost. And Anne, in the wake of a tragedy that has disrupted her career and silenced her music, has fled to the neighboring house, a showy summer home owned by her husband's wealthy family. When Frankie finds an injured baby crow in the forest, little does she realize that the charming bird will bring all three lost souls, Frankie, Annie, and Aiden together on a journey toward hope, healing, and rediscovering joy. Crow Talk is an achingly beautiful story of love, grief, friendship, and the healing power of nature in the darkest of times. So 
A couple reasons why this book sounds super appealing to me. First of all, it's set in the Pacific Northwest, one of my favorite areas of the country, and I absolutely love books that are set in that area. Two, we have an ornithologist. I love birds. I love birds so much. Um, if you don't know that about me, you do now. And the fact that we're going to have probably a lot of talk about birds, that's super appealing to me. Um, I know that sounds silly, but it is definitely something that is up my alley. Third, we have little Aiden that is refusing to speak. That's so sad. And I want to find out why he refuses to speak. I want to find out um, more about their story. So this sounds very interesting to me. And I have lots of questions. And the only way I'm going to get those answered is if I give this one a read. And last but not least, we have Blue Sisters by Coco Mellers. And this is published by Ballantine Books. Now, for those of you that recognize Coco Mellor's name, she was the author of Cleopatra and Frankenstein, a book that I have not read, but I've heard so many good things about. So when I saw this one, it also reminded me that that's a book that I need to get to as well. So this book says there are three blue sisters and they are exceptional and exceptionally different. Avery, the eldest and a recovering heroin addict turned straight-laced lawyer lives with her wife in London. Bonnie, a former boxer, works as a bouncer in Los Angeles following a devastating defeat. And Lucky, the youngest, models in Paris while trying to outrun her hard partying ways. They also had a fourth sister, Nikki, whose unexpected death left the family reeling. A year later, as they each navigate grief, addiction, and ambition, they find they must return to New York to stop the sale of the apartment they were raised in. But coming home is never as easy as it seems. As the sisters reckon with the disappointments of their childhood and the loss of the only person who held them together, they realize that the greatest secrets they've been keeping might not have been from one another but from themselves. Imbued with Coco Mellor's signature combination of humor and heart, Blue Sisters is a story of what it takes to keep living after loss and ultimately to fall in love with life again. And that just sounds really good. It sounds like it's going to be one of those stories that makes me laugh, but it also tugs at my heartstrings. Anytime you have groups of sisters or siblings that are coming together to take care of some big family type business, you always know that there's going to be a lot of drama. It's going to be messy and I am here for it. So I am definitely wanting to get to this one. I will probably probably prioritize Cleopatra and Frankenstein first, but this is definitely one that I'm happy that's coming out this month and maybe I can get to this one by the end of the year. So those are my anticipated releases. As I said, there were so many this month that I didn't even begin to scratch the surface, but those are kind of the major ones that jumped out at me. Are any of these books ones that you're interested in reading? Are there any ones that I missed that you think would be books that I would like to read that I didn't mention. Um, any of those comments would be welcome and I will see you toward the end of April for my May anticipated releases and until we read again. Bye!